with a WWE producer admitting to attending AEW shows in disguise and more. This is Wrestling Hub, my name is John, and you're watching the Wrestling Report for June 28th. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. Following his victory over Tanahashi at Forbidden Door for the interim AEW title, John Moxley mentioned that he might have suffered a concussion. While this had many concerned, Dave Meltzer clarified on Wrestling Observer Radio that he doesn't have a concussion, and he's probably not going to use the line again, because he kind of recognized that if he doesn't have a concussion, he probably shouldn't use the line because people freak out over it, but that is what it is. It was just a line that he uses after really hard matches, but he's actually super happy. He loved his match last night. When it comes to ticket sales regarding the recent AEW and New Japan pay-per-view, it was said by Meltzer that I have never seen a show with this buying pattern. When tickets were put on sale, there were 20,000 and it sold out instantly in that pre-sale, not even the regular sale. Then they put a couple thousand more on the regular sale, sold out instantly, no more tickets. They later opened up a whole bunch of new tickets and they didn't sell anything. At the end, they had all of those extra tickets out there and didn't sell anything and it felt like, you know, with the ratings and everything, there was no momentum to the show, but the crowd that was was there and I believe this was the second largest crowd in company history. It was an all-time great show. I thought that it's one of the best shows that AEW ever did. Recalling his promo from SmackDown calling out Happy Corbin, Pat McAfee revealed on a show that he got The Rock's permission to use the millions and millions catchphrase. Shout out to The Rock, by the way. Thanks, man. People are wondering, in the wrestling world, when you say somebody else's catchphrase, it's kind of a thing. Don't want to go too in the weeds here, but I did get permission beforehand from Dwayne Johnson to say it. If you recall, in my last program against Austin Theory, when I was allowed to speak into the mic, I was in the middle of doing it, and I got interrupted. That was around the time when I originally got the okay to say it. That was in Miami, I think. It would have went bananas. I apologize for not. It seems like I kind of ripped your thing. Didn't give you credit. They started the music. It was a whole situation. I didn't know they were hitting the music then. I'm the only person in the history of the company, maybe modern era, where I'm kind of told some things, but all things. You only need to know what you need to know. I get a chance to speak tonight? Yeah, you're speaking tonight. Then I'll send the text. This is what I'm thinking. Can I drop a line? He actually responded and said, give me some context so we can really get this thing going. He gave me an entire here we go. I'm very grateful and thankful for The Rock. I appreciate the hell out of him. With former WWE star Cesaro making his debut in AEW at Forbidden Door, Booker T took to his Hall of Fame podcast to call out WWE, saying I don't think Cesaro really had a chance to go out and cut a lot of promos, especially perhaps not the way he wanted to cut promos. WWE has a structure. It's a lot different than AEW. A lot of the guys that go over there to AEW, you think Christian would have been able to cut that same promo he cut last week in WWE? Probably not right now. Being a publicly traded company, guys can go over there and have a little bit more freedom. I think with Cesaro, I think we're going to see a whole lot more. Perhaps what Cesaro wanted to do in WWE. We'll see. Last night on Raw, John Cena made his return as fans celebrated the 20-year anniversary of his main roster debut. US Champion Theory would finally get to interact with Cena on screen, with the two taking jabs at each other in the former weeks over social media. While many may be excited over the prospect of this match, this apparently puts Bobby Lashley in an awkward spot as he is set to face Theory at Money in the Bank. It was noted on Wrestling Observer Radio, Lashley's in a lame duck situation because he can't destroy Theory. You would think the way that they've booked previously, that Lashley would tear him up and that's probably not going to happen because they have to protect Theory to a degree. Lashley could still win the title because it really doesn't benefit Cena to be in a US title match. Or you could do something where Cena causes Theory to lose if he's going to show up on Saturday to give them something special. You don't want to do the big angle right now because then why even do the Lashley match? Because it becomes the cold match.
Speaking about Raw on his podcast, former WWE writer Vince Russo mentioned that WWE is treating AJ Styles, who is not a part of Money in the Bank, like he is just another body. They simply have that system. They're creating wrestlers. And guess what? We'll get somebody that'll be half the price of an AJ Styles. They're not looking at it. Like, Taker is a special case. The relationship he had with Vince. Outside of that, man, what it really comes down to is every wrestler is replaceable. And guess what? The one waiting in line will do it for half the amount of money that we're paying this one. There is no emotional attachment at all. There isn't. With AEW stars sending in congratulatory videos to John Cena on Raw, Fightful noted that they had permission from the AEW president. June 27th, WWE Raw saw a very unique situation with AEW talent Paul White and Brian Danielson appearing during John Cena congratulations videos for his 20-year anniversary. We're told that the situation was very straightforward in making it happen. The idea was pitched, and then AEW founder Tony Khan was contacted in order to see if he'd be okay with it. Given the circumstances surrounding the videos, he was said to be okay with the video videos and provided approval. A WWE source told us that they were able to land virtually everyone they hoped to for the congrats videos. These instances have been few and far between since AEW launched in 2019. Reacting to those supportive messages from Raw, John Cena wrote on Twitter, overwhelmed with all the messages through this month. Being at Raw last night gave me an opportunity to show you how much you mean to me. Thank you, WWE, for every chance you've taken on me. So I will continue to always give my best for my home, for my family, for us. Giving praise to The Undertaker on his podcast, William Regal mentioned what he is the best at in the ring. In my opinion, the greatest, if you want to call it, seller. The greatest reactor in the entire industry is The Undertaker, especially when he came back with more of a fighting style. Going into WrestleMania with Shawn Michaels, two matches at the time, you knew that he wasn't going to lose, right? Nobody thought the streak was going to end, right? He does such a good job. Last night, fans took notice of the fact that Kevin Owens did not appear on Raw. Despite having fans concerned, The Observer noted, Kevin Owens, whatever the situation, it's minor. But he was not on the show, which is why the Ezekiel match did not happen as originally scheduled. And I guess that was going to be for the last spot in Money in the Bank. When it comes to his status for Money in the Bank, Meltzer said, I did not check if Kevin Owens would be ready by Friday. I just know that he was not ready tonight, but it's nothing serious, is what I was told. So, perhaps, he could be ready by Friday and they could do that match. Kevin Owens is a guy that you kind of want in that match, you know, because he's really good at working with ladders and things like that. He's got a lot of experience, and he's got a very high willingness to do crazy stuff. So maybe the idea was for him to go in. I don't know that he necessarily was going to win. The undefeated TBS champion Jade Cargill has been on a roll in AEW. Talking busted open radio about why WWE was not able to sign her, Mark Henry said, I made that offer to WWE, but they didn't want to relinquish enough control. You know, there was financial considerations and all of that stuff that is personal information. But I knew people over there in AEW, and I was on Team Jade, so I was like, listen, I've got somebody for y'all if y'all want her. This is what's necessary. And boom, they picked her up. Member of the Dark Order and AEW original Alan Angels took to Twitter to fuel rumors of him leaving the promotion. He blacked out his profile and wrote that he is excited for what's to come. With Stu Grayson, Marco Stun, and Joey Janela leaving earlier in the year, it remains to be seen who ends up released next. After being released by WWE last year, Jake Atlas would announce his retirement from pro wrestling before going on to sign with AEW. He would end up injured during a match against Adam Cole, which had many fans worried. Following a successful surgery to repair a torn ACL, Atlas was arrested on battery charges for assaulting his partner last month. According to TMZ, the charge has been dropped. As court documents reveal, it is the opinion of the writer that this case is not suitable for prosecution. Still, Fightful said earlier in the month that Atlas was not likely to return to AEW, given he only signed a per appearance deal as opposed to a full time contract.
Recalling a time where he attended AEW shows in disguise, the former senior producer of WWE Podcast revealed, I went to Dynamite in person two weeks in a row, once in Jersey at the Prudential Center and once at this big Grand Slam thing at Arthur Ashe. And both times, I wore a luchador mask because it's like I was given tickets to the events and I didn't know where they were going to be. And just in case they happen to be ringside and then someone does a really crazy move and it cuts to the crowd, here is WWE employee Dan Rickard. Following her absence from Raw, Dana Brooke wouldn't know that she was in a car accident. Much to the WWE Universe for the support and love, standing up for me. The reason why I was not on Raw last night was because I got into a bad car accident the past week. I am doing good and will be back in no time. I really appreciate the love and couldn't ask for better fan support. With rumors circulating that Sasha Banks has been released by WWE, PW Insider gave an update on Banks and Naomi following their walkout on Raw a month back. For those who continue to ask, as of this morning, Sasha Banks and Naomi remain listed on the active WWE roster internally. There has been no change in their status made internally since they walked out on that Raw taping several weeks ago. Neither have been officially released. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.